going to be talking about where Jonathan Taylor is going to be going, if he's going anywhere. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following just kind of like the chronicles of Jim Ursay and Jonathan Taylor going back and forth at each other on Twitter. Um, right now, Jonathan Taylor is requesting a trade. Um, Jim Ursay says you're not getting a trade or, a, or an extension. Um, so I guess my question is, Dobbs, um, where do you think Jonathan Taylor ends up playing next year? So as of right now, let me just start off by saying, like tangent, but I'll, I'm going to get off this quickly. Dude, Jim Ursay just cracks me up. I mean, like that dude, he just cracks me up. I mean, there's a lot. I can say a lot of stuff about the guy. He, I believe it at the fact that he just cracks me the hell up. Um, but we're okay. There's a lot of things on the situation. So where I think I might see him play, to be honest with you, if I'm the Chiefs, I'm going to make a move at him. I almost feel like in the weirdest way, I don't know. Again, do you want to pay him that extension? That's, I guess, where things come into play with that. But if he could stay healthy and be on the Chiefs, that'd be amazing. And I know I've heard some some rumors about that, but you know how rumors go. It's usually a bunch of bullshit. I also heard a rumor that the Bears would be a really good spot for him. And that was something that potentially could happen. But I don't think that Poles is going to take a risk on that. I think that's much more of a, uh, you have to be established. You know, with someone, like when you're an established role and you have your your job is more secure, so maybe you take a shot. I don't think that, yeah, I don't think Poles is going to be taking a shot on Jonathan Taylor. I'm not buying that one. So, that's and like like we were saying, bro, this is where the problem comes in with the Jonathan Taylor situation. The problem comes in is where it's like, we know he's incredibly talented. It's like, who's gonna take the risk? Who's gonna have the money on the shelf to actually take the risk? Right. That's where a lot of this is really tough. And there's a lot of variables, but all in all, like I feel like I feel like we're gonna see him back on the Colts because whenever I feel like we're gonna see a player in a new situation and I it's like a guarantee, oh, their situation is completely screwed and they're not gonna be able to reconcile with the team, like the Debo Samuel situation, it it somehow ends up where it reconciles and things are fine. And this just has that same feeling to it. I agree. I think we see him back on Indianapolis. I think it also has to do with like, okay, in reality, like the teams that are willing to trade for a running back are typically teams that are already competing and need like that one last piece. And they're usually strapped for cash because they're a good team. So they already have all their pieces. Um, and I don't think that like these teams are going to be willing to drop, you know, 15, 16 mil a year on a running back. And I don't know if that's what Jonathan Taylor is asking for. I think he sees himself as a top three back in the league, which is a fair assessment. But it's just like I don't see a team like the Bills, Chiefs, Dolphins or Eagles willing to pay that. And also, I mean, like are you willing to give up like a third rounder for a one year rental of a Jonathan Taylor? And I don't even know if that's enough to get the Colts to part with them. Um, and then at the end of the day, like if you're Jonathan Taylor, like you, the whole point of all this going on is an extension. So if you get traded to a place and they're not willing to extend you, are you even going to play for them? So it's kind of like a, it's a really difficult uh, situation. I don't see Jonathan Taylor going anywhere because Jim say, like you said, no, intent to extend or trade him it's just a, a, a tough situation for running backs all around obviously like Saquon Josh Jacobs Tony Power at all we're going through this um, Josh Jacobs obviously still not signed but at the end of the day like is Jonathan Taylor gonna miss out on all this money like I not playing this year I don't think so I think the Colts kind of call his bluff like but if he sits out I feel like Josh Jacobs has a way higher chance of sitting out no, then honestly, you got two of the best backs of the league not playing. That would be kind of crazy. There, I just have, bro, like I have so much to say on the subject. I'm trying to like figure out how to like censor certain parts out. So I have to like, I'm not just trying to like go and just keep rambling. But I think if I had to like narrow down the most prevalent thought in my mind, I think this is what it is. And this is something, again, the whole league as a whole, running backs, this is the consensus everyone's got to come to because it's the reality. And so, again, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but again, this is the reality in the situation where everyone's got to come to this realization is one, because what it comes down to is the guys that are cutting the contracts, they look and they see like, okay, na name me any other position group where you could have a star player at that position group go down. And then you could have a rookie come in and produce incredibly similarly that there isn't besides running back. That's the only time you ever see it in the league. Is it is the guy, the star goes down and the fucking rookie comes in out of Tulsa and rushes for a thousand yards or from fucking Texas mining and agriculture. <laughs> or you, it, just, it doesn't, you get Texas A&M's a good school, but it could be oh Minnesota agriculture mining. You get, you get the point. It's like, yeah. bro, these dudes come from anywhere. They produce in the NFL. And even if it's for a short time, that's kind of the trend. And that's the point. 
is you can count on a lot of these guys, almost all of them, to produce highly for a short period of time if they're in a good situation, which brings me to the ultimate finale point of all this. Would you rather pay a really good running back to have to run really hard and stay healthy and all these variables and, 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 and you know, absolutely just break apart the defense? Okay, that's one situation. Or would you like situation B where you don't pay your running back a lot, but they don't have to do all that extra shit because you have a perfect O-line and you have all these other variables like good receivers that stress the box less so that you have to, you get what I'm saying? So you're either paying the running back a lot to make up for all the holes you don't have or you have a running back that doesn't, you don't need a star running back because you don't have holes. I think I like option B a lot more and that's where all the GMs are seeing it as. Why would I pay you to be my, someone who's going to, I need you to break four tackles when I could just have someone come in where you're not going to break really any tackles because my line is solid. I, it just also it's like, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier. Jonathan Taylor has a lot of miles on him. He was a four year starter at Wisconsin. And at the end of the day, like kind of going off your point of like not paying a star running back, you can invest in like a running back room that has like different like capabilities and everything like that. And obviously like having a start, like that doesn't replace having a star running back, but like, Teams have to game plan differently. I know you said that last week on our show. Like, oh, absolutely. So it's just like, it's almost not worth it for these GMs to invest 15, 16 mil a year on these guys who peak in year one or two. They don't even, you know, they don't play every formation. It's, that's the whole point. Like, yeah. like we were saying, bro, it's like certain running backs, they all play different, like you have different roles. Why would I pay you 16 million if you're not even blocking on third down? It's like real shit. And that's really how things are going nowadays. It's like all these things have to be valid, like not, not val- but they have to be realized. Yeah. And that's and running backs are almost the ones I feel like they need to realize it the most right now. Because again, like we said, players association does have to do something to help these guys out when it comes to contract year and stuff, or or even the rookie contracts. But everything else at this point, I mean, the valuation of how the contracts go, it, it's it's happening for a reason. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like it could hinder Anthony Richardson's development, which would be sad because I think he would benefit from a strong partner in the backfield. That's why I was sad about this. Yeah. 